Hi everybody. The month of May is always flip flop appeal month for Sarah. And this week, Sarah are running their solidarity games in which there are 15 challenges. I found myself very busy all week and I had promised myself I was going to make a, a flip flop as, as one of the solidarity games challenges. But I ran out of time. So I went to the storage and I got this huge giant flip flop that I had built in 2010. Sorry, it's 11 years old, but isn't it the most amazing flip flop you've ever seen? This has been accomplishing the challenge for this year. The flip flop is it's a symbol of solidarity, walking in the steps of others, especially those that are struggling or impoverished or being deprived of rights or where their rights are being violated. If you're feeling generous and you want to support the flip flop appeal, please go to the Serve social media www.serve.ie and don't be generous. Thank you. We're reporting live from this very sleepy town in Cork, Ireland. As you can see, the flowers are blooming and the skies are sunny. And would you believe this is Cork? And of course, there are exotic plants in this estate with numerous houses also here. And the grass is green and it's extremely lush. And what can we say? The residents are also unable to look after their estate with a disgraceful amount of rubbish. We are now going to hear about this estate from a very young man who's been living in the estate for all of five years. His name is Ethan and here is his report. Say that again. It's a gigantic tree. And it was the end of the very top. And it was very tough. How old do you think it is? 50 billion years old. Yeah, that's pretty good. I am how many children play here, do you think? 500. Yes? All the children from the estate? Yeah, 500. Yes. What games do you play? <laughs> Thank you, Ethan, for this report. We let you play with your father, but your father should be at work. Okay, then. Supplies are in plenty in the estate, no problem there. There is also a post box for residents to stay in touch with their loved ones. But as you know, postage is extremely expensive, so we won't be doing that. And it says that customer parking only, but we noticed that some of these people were just non-customers at all. And that concludes this report, signing out. Hi! <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> now, any words from the winner? Oh, okay. Well, uh, I'm pretty tired, I have to say. Twice the age of some of these young guys, and yet I beat them. All for sure. Nothing like solidarity and fire in your belly to pull things off. <laughs> well done. Uh -oh. In my recent visit to my mom's home, I decided to explore Cove. This is a view of Cove from Kennedy Pier, close to where the Titanic stopped. It's last port of call, 1912. St. Coleman's Cathedral, that you can see in the distance, began its construction in 1868 and was not completed until over a century later in 1919. The architects were Pugin and Ashland. A lot of you might be familiar with forts in Cork Harbour, like Camden or Carlisle Fort, but today I will show you Cove Fort, also home of the Titanic Memorial Garden. On the way to the fort, we pass the Old Town Hall on East Beach. Head along Harbour Row and at the bottom of East Hill, take a look back at the town and see a chimney stack, which was the powerhouse of the public baths built in 1907. It also became the US Naval Men's Club in the First World War and during the 40s and 50s the site was converted into a dance hall and cinema, which closed its doors in 1992. Next head down to Connolly Street to what's locally known as the Holy Ground, a red light district when Cove was known as Queenstown in the 19th century. As we enter the Memorial Gardens, we are entering the fort with the Harbour Pilot Boat Station on our right hand side. This memorial plaque looks out to where the Titanic would have docked. Coming down these stairs, the views alone speak for themselves. Don't miss out on visiting Cove. Welcome to Scala, a community of the Redemptorists in Cork, Ireland, and the home of Surf. To the left, you see the house where the Redemptorists live in, 
Among them is Jerry O'Connor, chairman of SURF, and non-redemptorist Konstantin Becker, who works as a volunteer for SURF. To the right is the retreat center, where school classes would meet in non-COVID times. During the pandemic, it was used for multiple purposes. For example, the now internet famous video of the Jerusalem dance by the Scala community in partnership with the Redemptorist Teen Nuns in Dublin and the Redemptorists in Brazil. Scala is some beautiful pieces of nature. Still, it rains sometimes. This is the back of the house and another view on the beautiful garden. Scala's kitchen is always full of life. It serves as a vital function for daily life, the most important part being the coffee machine. Out of the kitchen, Scala has a comfortable lobby. If you go further down, you enter the conference room. There is also a community room where rugby and GEA matches are watched with big passion. And since it's a redemptorist community, there is also a prayer room. From the prayer room, we go downstairs to the basement. Here you can see the surf office, where under non cover times the surf team would work on a regular basis. You can see that it fulfills the slogan, a happy office is a messy office. This is Fluffy, he's a neighbor's cat. He often comes to Scala to get food, just as in this moment. I hope you enjoyed this virtual tour of Scala. <laughs>